run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Day three of the new intro. Still like it? Yeah. I actually I like it. it. I think it's very cool. Uh, this is Run It Back, FanDuel TV. Michelle Chandler, Lou Will, and Sham Sharania coming to us from his castle in the sky. Beep, 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 um, beep, 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 we have breaking beep, news. Oh, wait, we have breaking from, news? Yeah. We gotta get Hold Luca on. in that animation. Chandler scoops? That's what we need. After last we night, little, we gotta get Luca in that animation. We got a little parts of the scoops here. I just got a verbal confirmation from Lou Will that he will be going to stage. Coach. What? This week, <laughs> he's hyped for Morgan Whalen as he Wait, goes. Wait, what does one wear to stagecoach? Is this not country? All right, country? so I've never been. T-shirt, jeans, and boots. Yeah, oh like a God. flannel. I'm in. Some boots, some jeans, some baggy jeans. Okay. Any hats Somebody hooked me up with some VIP yeah. tickets. Well, you wear like a bandana kind of around because We need footage of you two there. We. I That's promise you, we need footage. I'm, I'm, I'm there. dead serious. Well, Lou's become a country fan in the last what few months? Uh, three weeks. weeks. Oh, three weeks. Oh, God, it's very new. But I'm in. I'm Give in. It's but, just, again, it's, hey, it's, just, it's, it's rap in a different way. It's, it's self-expression in a different way that I'm used to. I like it. What is happening? The right content now? is the same. Though. Can Shams go with y'all if he gets here early enough? Shams, uh, Shams can go. Shams is busy till Sunday. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. okay. I don't know, Shams. I'm pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I just want video. Um, we got distracted. I am so sorry. We have games. You were at the game last night. I was. How do you even manage it all, Chandler? Yep, Mavs, Clippers. We're going to want your take here in a second. But Luca, it's all Luca. 96-93 win. That series is tied. Finally, somebody lost at home. P.J. Washington with a playoff career high 18. Kawhi, 15 points in 35 minutes. Um, this one by Jason Kidd was called 90s basketball at its best. Uh, okay. Chandler, look, you were there, so I'm going to start with you just because of that. But what, what was it like? What was the vibe? Uh, Talk to us. It was a great vibe. It was a lot of fun being there. I've only been to like two or three actual live games since I've retired, so it's very Fair. different. But the thing that stuck out to me the most was the Mavs just pressure on defense, starting with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. They really were forcing James Harden to kind of turn his back into 94 feet. They were pressuring him full court all night long, which you've never really seen that effort from especially those two guys. And when you see these scores, now everyone used to talk about during the regular season, oh, there's no defense, the game, there's too much scoring, there's too much threes. Not this postseason so far. So teams, we knew this would happen. We knew once the half court got slowed down and once there wasn't so much transition that it, teams would have to play defense. And the Mavs, it's been their weakness all year long. So I was impressed that they can hold this team, the Clippers, to 93 points. And when you have your best player out there doing that and he's setting the tone and he's denying James Harden, he's denying Kawhi Leonard. Then you have P.J. Washington also playing great defense, Derek Jones Jr. This is their recipe to win because they're so good offensively. We know what they're going to get, especially from those two guys. So when the other guys start chiming in 12, 14 points and they're locking up playing this physical defense, they're a much better team. So that was my biggest takeaway was this is how they won the game. And now they're going back to Dallas where they're much, much better. Fair point. Uh-oh. However. But, oh, oh, this is however, the bet. Okay. But I, I think this benefits, this style of play benefits the Clippers more in a seven-game series opposed to a sample size really? of just one game for the Dallas Mavericks. Like, are you really gonna def are you really gonna depend on Luca and Kyrie to be your primary defenders and really get those stops in the course of a, of a, of a seven-game series? I think this been a, this goes into the direction of the of the Clippers when you do that. You know, you you look at a Kawhi, you look at PG, you look at Russell Westbrook, you look at Zubac at the rim, you look at uh, Terrence Mann, the Norman Powell's. These are guys who have reputations to be able to play on both sides of the basketball offense and defense. So I, I thought the Clippers struggled last night, and that's what you saw. We saw a grind out game. Can you depend on P.J. Washington to give you another 20-point game? Are you going to watch Kawhi Leonard struggle the way that he did last night? He took he was 7 for 17, mm -hmm. took the most shots. Um, Harden didn't take a lot of shots. Paul George didn't take a lot of shots. I don't see that being the norm for this Clippers basketball team. So great grind out win for the Dallas Mavericks. But if this is going to be the style of play moving forward, I think this benefits the Clippers. And see, the difference is when, when Dallas plays really well, they do get those 
15 to 20 points from P.J. They get production from their big guys. But the same for the Clippers. So when you have Terrence Mann going 2 for 7, Jordan. Norman Powell going 2 for 10, and Westbrook going 2 for 9, those guys also have to find a way to get up to, to be productive. It can't just be the Paul George, uh, James Harden show. And then with Kawhi back, it almost felt like they were deferring to him too much. Like They, they, they took control more in that first game. James Harden was way more aggressive. Paul George made way, way more aggressive. And I think you'll see that if Giannis comes back in that series too because mm -hmm. That's the guy, right? Kawhi Leonard was their best player all season long, so they're trying to get him comfortable. They're trying to get his legs Makes back. Sense. But they're almost a better team in Game One without him, without doing that. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I felt like I felt like they were they were deferring, trying to get him back in a rhythm, opposed to just playing basketball, let him get the ball naturally where he's going to catch it. Kawhi Leonard is is an all world talent. The ball isn't is going to find him wherever he goes. So you don't have to force feed him and get him shots. But I also thought a lot of his looks were in places that he normally gets it. He was catching in the short post. Little iso ball, 18 to uh, 16 feet away from the rim. Those are shots that he would normally make. Um, I thought it, I thought his rhythm was off a little bit. So when it comes down to it, going to Dallas, like we talked about the Lakers, I don't think they're encouraged by going right. coming back to LA with the way that they've played in Denver. I think this is the opposite for the Clippers. I think they feel really confident in playing a better basketball game when they go down to Dallas moving forward. Okay, well, I, you know what? Since we're talking about Kawhi, we'll stick to that. We'll come back to Luca in one second because the 35 minutes and it was his first game since the end of March. Were you surprised by the minutes total? Is that kind of what you expected? I mean, that's a lot of minutes for someone that's like been out for a long time. With right? no contact. With, with with no contact, no practice, like yeah. no five on five, basically just individual work and training room work and things like that. that that's a lot. And I understand that for them to get where they want to get to this season, they need Kawhi Leonard, and I think they know that. So that was part of their plan is to, you know, rush him back, have him be there full time. There's no point in having him on a minute restriction in this series because the series, it, it, you don't want to look back and be like, damn, why True. did we do that? And now, it's, now we're down 3-1 coming back to L.A. and Kawhi Leonard's on a minute restriction still. So I understand their, their big picture is to have him back fully, but... He looked rusty, he, and he looked very rusty, and How he didn't he look not? himself. And 35 minutes for his first game back to me was a lot. Seemed like a lot uh, if you've been paying attention. But back to Luca because it was his moment to shine last night. Shams, you watched this game. What did you think of Luca's performance? I mean, to me, Luka Doncic, the way the Mavericks look, they're a high seed finish away from Luka Doncic winning an MVP. And you saw how comfortable they were in the second game compared to the first game. They just looked out of sorts from much of the first game, really playing from behind the entire time. And Luka Doncic, the way he came out, how aggressive he played, 5-14 from three, but you can just tell from his aggressiveness. Uh, Chandler hit on it def defensively, the way that him and Kyrie Irving were both locking up. It reminded me a lot of, J uh, of the way Kyrie Irving locked up James Harden in that first Brooklyn-Philadelphia matchup. I was there in Philly a, a few years ago when James Harden got traded after asking out to Philadelphia. When Kyrie Irving locks in defensively and Luka Doncic locks in and, t and they take pride, and, and we know how physical Luka Doncic is. He's, he's, he's built <laughs> very strong. Um, and when he takes advantage of that, you know – um, that's that's potentially due to his advantage and when he takes pride in that it's big and this is the hottest team in the second half of, uh, in the NBA arguably so the Mavericks winning on the road sets them up now uh, with home court advantage and so yeah Luca two two of 17 when Luca's the primary defender Ooh. do we believe in that is that something that no. the Dallas Mavericks that's can hang their hat on no it's no. one game no I don't see that. That's but not the norm. What I can tell you is when you see your best player doing that for 45 minutes last night, if you're Derek Jones, if you're Josh Green, if you're Exxon, if you're Tim Hardaway Jr., you know damn well you have to do that because he's carrying the load offensively. He's hitting these crazy step backs. And we're talking, he's doing this on Westbrook. He's doing this on Paul George. He's right. doing this on Terrence Mann. He's doing this on really, really, really good defenders. And he's still getting to wherever he wants. He's still getting to his spots. He's still getting in the paint. And then shots like this are just insane. Like, that's not even, you honestly just, I, heard, so I saw people like, why aren't we double teaming Luka? Because then you're leaving someone on island with Kyrie Irving, who's arguably a better one-on-one <laughs> And you, -on -one you got great one-on-one -on -one defenders anyway. I'm sorry, if Luka's making this step back 32-foot shot I mean, over Zubats, like, like you live with that. You pat him on the ass. And screaming at everyone afterwards. And you say, good that's shot. Fun, but actually. My thing is when you see him leaving all out there, playing defense, moving his feet, that is when, okay, now this team's clicking. Now this team's starting to believe it. And it starts with him on that end because you know he's going to be special on the offensive end. How was the complaining last night? Better, worse, same? 
It's still pretty bad. Okay, I just want to. It's, it's, it's really it's bad. It's still pretty bad, but it, yeah, he's got to let that it's, go. It's like it—it it really distracts you from what is greatness sometimes. It's—it's it's, he's a guard, Jokic. Like it, they're the same. They're the same, same player. Same body. Same. Yeah, they're the same. It's the yeah. same thing, except he just is a point guard and like shoots it from deeper, and it's—it's it's ridiculous. No matter what you do to this man. Small guy, big guy. <laughs> he's either faster, bigger, or stronger than you, and you can't. He's gonna play his game no matter what. Early on, too, Kyrie, they were double teaming Kyrie, like so. Yeah. Like, when you have that good of an offensive duo, they can't take away both. Then you can space the floor with shooting. It's a, it's a, it could be a mismatch nightmare for teams if they're clicking. And last night they clicked. Well, your team better get it together, Lou. That's all. I think so. Okay. I think they will. You good. think they get zero, one, or both in Dallas? I think they get one. I, I think right, they get so one. I think that's back. fair. But for all intents and purposes, I have this series going seven games. I think this is going to be one of the better series that we see come out of the Western Conference. This one's going to be a dog fight. I, I like the fact that Dallas got out of their comfort zone to get a win. They did everything that they needed to do to get a win. They didn't, do the, they didn't try to outscore the Clippers. They said that we were going to sit down, we were going to play defense, play a grinded out basketball game, which is dangerous because, like I said, I think that style of play, it benefits the Clippers in the long run. But they did what it, what it takes. I think they go back to a, a, a shoot em up, bang bang type of team in Dallas where they try to <laughs> outscore everybody. And for that reason, I think the Clippers go get one. And if, if Kawhi is okay, then that, he's not going to have 15 again. I would think that that gets better as well. Uh, the other game last night, not quite as fun uh, this one Suns Timberwolves Minnesota with a 2 nothing lead in that uh, yeah 105-93 was the total there Jaden McDaniels playoff career high for 25 points 8 rebounds Conley and Gobert had 18 points apiece the big 3 for Phoenix that's what we want to hear 52 points 18 of 45 uh, with 10 turnovers um, they've now been held to under 100 points in both of these games you know I, I, Gobert's getting killed. Granted, the poll was only like 80 players, but he's getting killed. However, then you see something like this. Are we being too hard on him? Is this, what are well, we thinking? Well, yeah, yeah, that's part of the brand. Yeah, but that's <laughs> what we're saying <laughs> yesterday. Is he like overrated it. at basketball? It's not, I don't think he is. I think he's just a defensive specialist that literally has made this team the number one defense. And you got to yeah. give Jaden McDaniels credit as well. The way he can move his feet and he's so tall, he's long, he can guard point guards, he can front the post down low to on a big. But Rudy Gobert changes everything. He alters every shot. He anchors the paint. He's so good at help side, just kind of stunning and gonna, he'll, you see him, he'll be in the lane and he'll cleanse on the other side just to put fear in like Kevin Durant <laughs> to not go baseline. Like he's everywhere. And, and Wimby does the same thing because they're so long and they're so big. And as good as this Phoenix Sun Phoenix Suns big three trio could be, and they can explode every night. It's it's not a good matchup because the Timberwolves, no matter what, we know they're going to play defense every single night. Right. We know they're going to lock in. Their size, their length has really bothered. They've the established Phoenix an identity. Suns. This is who they are. So the Suns, yeah, they might go off every now and then. Devin Booker is going to have 50 one of these games. Kevin Durant, they're going to all have 30, 25 points, but can they do it for seven games? Can they do it in the next? And, and you, like you think this is going seven? No, I don't. And I've been on the Suns. I've been trying to keep staying and with it, the Suns. Like positively. And they're consistent with what I've said. A lot of flash without the fire. I, I have, I'm yet to see this team reach its potential in, in being the team that you think they, that they are with, with so much offensive firepower, right? Like even last night in the turnovers, they literally were just picking, rolling, and throwing the ball out of bounds because of the synergy. They just, they were out of, they were just out of sorts. And at this point in the season, second game of the playoffs, you would figure that they have this figured out already and they still don't. Like the Suns would almost match up better against Denver, who's not that great of a defensive team. Like this team is, it's the nightmare for them because again, with their best player, Anthony Edwards, he's also setting the tone. So he's one. Of the, he's probably the best two-way player, in my opinion, in the NBA. Then you got guys like Jay McDaniels, who's locking up, and he's also having career high in points. Right. Physical. It's 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 insane what they're doing. So when you play that good of I mean, defense every single night, oh. and you're talking <laughs> shit, and you're being <laughs> physical. Him these guys are confident, and they know because defense is. Defense is a, is a choice, and these guys play hard every single night, and they defend every single night, whether shots are falling or not. They're locking up. In a, in a game like that last night, we should give credit to Mike Conley, where your your primary scores they struggle a little bit, but you get you get big time. You you get a lot of production from Conley, get a lot of production from, from McDaniel's, but you also get somebody that's sturdy, that's going to anchor your basketball team on offense and defense. 
And at the end of the day, just be a leader out there and allow these young guys to go out and just play hard. You know, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they're looking really, really impressive right now against the Phoenix Suns. It's not going to go seven. We're, we've decided that just now. Shams, um, 93 points with the big three as part of your team just doesn't add up. What are you seeing out there? What's happening? My understanding is the Suns' offense is a cause of concern internally right now. And the coaching staff, they're going to have to figure this out. If this team is going to have any chance in this series, they're already down 2-0. You look at two plays, one in the, in the first half, Yusuf Nurkic really goes iso on Rudy Gobert, misses um, really a play where you had multiple guys potentially open on the wing for opportunities. And then later in the second half, in the fourth quarter, Drew Eubanks uh, kind of misses Kevin Durant wide open, goes for a spin move, misses badly as well. Um, those two guys shot 19 times last night. Um, they're, they're, overall, their usage rating, you look at the, the Suns' usage rating, Booker 23.9, KD 23.3, and then Drew Eubanks 22.5. So the usage rating just doesn't seem like it's in a, in a great place right now around the Suns, just figuring out structure. And uh, I think, you know, Lou talked a little bit about it is, is – you know, having a little bit of point guard play. And I think we've all spoken about, Chandler's spoken about a point guard joining this team at some point. It's kind of rearing its ugly head. You're seeing Devin Booker, Brad Beal getting picked up 94 feet. And that caused a lot of stress on guys like that who are also asked offensively to play at a high level. So this is a team to me, if you score 93 points, you know, you give up 105, you have usually a chance to win games. They just last night could not figure it out offensively. Let me, let me, let me ask you this. Is it a time now for the Phoenix Suns where they explore the idea of maybe Bradley Beal coming off the bench? And maybe, and listen, bring Brad, bring Brad off the bench, pair him up with IT. Uh, or start, him up as, with, literally start Isaiah Thomas. Start, any, start a pair point him up. Call, like put, they, This team, Brad Beal, Interesting. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, they are phenomenal scorers. They can score in an array of ways. They've always had a point guard. They've always had someone to set up. So now this year, they're some of the best scoring wings that we have in the NBA, and we're trying to turn them into point guards. Right. It's just not what they do. It's not what they've done their whole career to make them who they are. So the fact that we're this late in the season, where the, se the season's almost over for them, and they have one point guard on their roster. It's Isaiah Thomas. They just <laughs> signed him two weeks ago. Right. So it's like uh, this hasn't worked all and year long. And a very long. capable point guard at that. Very so I think, listen, when you're down and you're, your offense is straight poop like theirs has been right now, they, they have to make a change. They have to do something drastic here because what they're doing here is not working. And it's just, it's iso ball. It's, it's like, there's no difference than playing at LA Fitness right now, playing, <laughs> taking turns, going iso. One -on there's no flow. There's no movement to their offense. And it's all because they don't have a setup, guys. It's just three scores. And I thought initially that would work because these guys are so talented and these guys are so good. And how do you guard all of them? But the defense is just set. They all pack the paint. And if they're not shooting the ball well and they're inefficient that night, they lose, they lose bad. And that's what's happening here. It's, uh, it's, it's, Mind-boggling. We do have a quote, though, out of Booker. He said, quote, when things turn to shit, they kind of, we have kind of separated. Mm. Um, what do we think about that? That's a bad time to say that. That's not <laughs> the best quote that you probably want to hear. Yeah, huh. I mean, that's, you, uh, the, yeah. Just, the quote is what it is. He's basically saying when they're, they're front runners, when it's not going well, when it's everything, the shot's not falling, they're not on the same page. And, and, and they have to be. I mean, these guys are all vet guys, too. These guys are all experienced, all star, Hall of Fame guys. So the fact that it's this point of the season, they're still not on the same page. I know they're frustrated. Yeah. I know they probably didn't expect to be down 2 0 like this, but again, <laughs> This, the series are so long. I feel like when teams go up 2-0 like this, everyone's like, oh, it's, it's over, it's over. Listen, the minute they win game three, then the pressure goes back to Minnesota. So fine. Man, there's still a lot yeah. of basketball. I think the left. Minnesota Timberwolves might have went to Phoenix last night. They're so excited after <laughs> hearing this quote. With playing <laughs> it's it not with, a great quote. It's not playing with so quote. much, playing with the confidence that they're playing with. Like, let's get this on. We're going to Phoenix tonight. We can't wait to play a game in Phoenix yeah. after hearing something. And you like know, that. Ant's gonna stir the pot. You know, oh yeah, he's gonna talk his shit. He oh, is. Yeah. Uh, he is fun. Shams, Grayson Allen, though, um, the right ankle situation that happened in the third. What do we have for him as the latest? When it rains and pours, now let's now let's take he out already, the best shooter. He already tweaked that right ankle, and then if you look at the play where he sprained it again, it's it's a nasty sprain, and he 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 jumped and he landed, put all his weight on that ankle, that right ankle, uh, turned it pretty bad. I mean, he didn't return last night. We'll see how it feels on Friday night in Game Three, but he's gonna undergo more tests today. 
uh, get treatment, get reevaluated. But that is a nasty <laughs> ankle sprain, back to back sprains, and back to back games. Uh, obviously, his status uncertain for game three. That sprain looked like a couple of weeks. Like it looked that, like it's not like a just a tweak that he up. can ice that and the swelling goes down. That looked pretty bad. Um, yeah, I don't love that. The crowd, by the way, I'm loving some of these chants and some of these buildings. The crowd was chanting <laughs> "Wolves in four. Wolves in four. Wolves right. in four. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe they don't. I don't know. Sun's coming back. What are we putting? They there? better bring that guy. Like that. They, be, they better <laughs> bring that. They better guy. He's, He's on the team playing. Yeah, he he, he better be. rally. He better he better fight someone because if not, this series is gonna end quickly. And it's it, it, and I'll be the first to say I did not see this happening. I was not a believer right. in, Oakland, in Minnesota because I hadn't seen them do I it before. I tried to tell you. And you know what's scary for Phoenix is <laughs> tried to tell defense, you. defense travels, man. Defense travels. They're going to play the same defense in Phoenix. So if the Suns don't magically figure out something and have a flow of their offense or switch up the rotations or do something drastic, like we're talking, like bringing Bradby off the bench, playing Isaiah Thomas, doing something, it's going to be the same outcome. Right. It, that quote makes me feel also like that the the morale's just so low. The Grayson Allen news, yeah, like, yeah. So they'll just fire their coach. They'll bring in someone else who didn't point. work somewhere else, and they'll try it again next year. That's a great point, Chandler. Yeah. And that is the kind of analysis that we are always <laughs> looking for here. Um, we had another game again. <laughs> Pacers Bucks, that one's tied up as well. Another uh, visiting team with a win away. Siakam, very well, 37 points, mm. 11 rebounds. Zero turnovers. This is the first. That, by the way, they were the first official road team to get that. the win. Could you try again? Chandler, your computer is being rude again. <laughs> uh, Tyrese hell? Halliburton, 12 <laughs> points, 12 assists. Uh, they had 38 assists, Indiana did. Five wow, turnovers. Impressive. And if you're wondering about Lillard, <laughs> He had his 34 and 26 of those came in the first half. But Pascal Siakam was the man of the night. Playoff career high in points uh, for the second straight game, by the way, leading the playoff in points. Average 22 in the regular season. He's just decided, Lou, that he is playoff I, Pascal. Yeah, shit, I was, I was wrong. <laughs> what, does that work? After, after, after game one, I said, you know, Milwaukee's going to run off with this series. This is going to be an easy one. Indiana completely changed the narrative and completely changed my mind and how this thing was going to go. So they turn around in game two and they run off with a big win. And that's on that's on the back of Pascal Siakam. Uh, him averaging whatever he's averaging in the playoffs, but being, being a leader in points in the playoffs, didn't see that coming. Mm -mm. But... That's a scary. That's a scary sight to see when he's locked in on the offensive end because we know who he is um, defensively as a defensive player, as somebody who's going to give you a bunch of different looks. But offensively, I didn't see this coming. This is going to be a scary Indiana Pacers team for the Milwaukee Bucks if he can keep this up. It's a damn <laughs> shame that they don't get the big national team. Well, they're not. It's just a nasty matchup. What Siakam <laughs> has, <laughs> but what he has been doing is insane. So yeah. he's been putting up historical numbers and he's always been that versatile guy he was this good in Toronto and he was a huge part of that championship run there yeah. and he's so versatile and he's so skilled and he's a perfect fit for Halliburton I think Halliburton has had 12 and I think maybe 11 or 12 points 12 in the first 12, game yeah. yeah they're not crazy it, there's going to be a time where he takes over and he gets going and he kind of dominates this series but for now it is Siakam and he's scoring in so many different ways and this is one of the most underrated moves that no one really talked about this offseason and he's a perfect fit for Halliburton he's a perfect fit for Miles Turner and he's a perfect fit for Rick Carlisle's offense the way they play up and down the way he can post up the way he can run the floor and, and he's showing it against them especially with no Giannis they don't have anybody that can check him so this is a huge huge problem for them. And, and it's a great fit that we just never saw. It's a, it's a nice weapon to have that probably no one was thinking about. Shams, your biggest takeaway from this one? Pascal Siakam made Pacers history first player to have a 30-point double-double in Pacers history. So shout out to Pascal Siakam. Shout this out. is why, like Chandler said, so you first? go out and you give up three first-round picks for Siakam, and he's, he's going to be a There's maximum no contract Paul type Jones. of player. That's the commitment you make when you trade three first-round draft picks. Um, and this is a team that's always lived and died by their offense. So to me, 12 assists for Tyrese Halliburton, him setting the table. He has not scored the way that I think he did in the regular season or at least through the in-season tournament. But he's setting the table, and Pascal Siakam stepped up big on a night that Tyrese Halliburton still has not found that breakout offensive game for himself. Rick Smith's never had a double-double. <laughs> <No. laughs> no Jermaine O'Neal, yeah, nobody? No Paul George. The, not nobody. a 30-point 
Not back to back 30 point double doubles. Oh, man. Al Harrington, nobody. All right, cool. Slackers is what I'm hearing. Playoff pass. Mr. <laughs> Playoff pass. He's back, baby. It's or, not a thing. It is a thing. We're going to make it happen. Um, you know, good. We get a Draymond quote. Couldn't imagine how we do a show without it. Uh, he right. said that the Pacers are an 82 game team, not a 16 game team. Chandler, uh, think about that. What's that mean? Live from Cabo. Uh, <laughs> from, from his podcast studio. Yeah, live from his, yeah. Uh, I Ooh, mean, Sean's they're, that they're an in season tournament team. They're a very good offensive Raining team. Raining champs. Now, it's funny how the play, it just shifts. Like Lou said, this was all Milwaukee first game. Damian Lillard literally punched them in the mouth, and we thought he's going to continue to do this. And mm. he played really good last night, too. But with no Giannis, I don't see their way in hell that this team beats Indiana Pacers. So, well, kind of a weird. It's also a weird quote to say that once they they won. Like, the, I don't know if he said it before one, the game. They're or... going back to Indiana. Like things are are looking up for this Indiana Pacers team. And I'm telling you right now, with Giannis, there's no chance they win this series without Giannis. Yeah, no kidding. No chance. No, no chance. chance. Ooh, that's a hell of a quote. Do you want to take buddy. that bet? Yeah. Lou, you I, pay I, us I would, each ten thousand dollars if Milwaukee <laughs> wins. But when they no, don't hold win. on, wait, wait. Yeah, you have Milwaukee. Yeah. I like that bet. Yeah, I like a bet. And we will give you $500 <laughs> when you guys the think Pacers Indiana win. Pacers are going to win this series? Yes, yeah. but I did already before any of the games started. I would take that bet in real life. What, this All is right. real life. What are you talking uh, about? Because nobody's paid out yet. Yeah, that's true. Chandler owes so me so believe. much money. Um, Dame Lillard, by the way, it, you mentioned the game one of it all, but eight of his 69 points in the series have come in the second half which is bizarre. How do you get a dude who, who is so prolific in scoring to do it more in the second half? Well, he's got to realize that this is his team right now with Giannis out especially, and there's no such thing as a bad shot. He's got to be uber aggressive, and he's got off to great starts, and the first half he had in game one was insane, but that yep. was it. And that's all they that's all they needed that game. Last night they needed him because this game got ugly in the second half, and they went on runs, and they need Dame Lillard to kind of stop that bleeding. Because when Chris Middleton has kind of been up and down, and Bobby Portis is not having those crazy games that he can have, uh, it's not going to come from from anywhere else. And, and Lopez can provide some sort of outside shooting and some scoring, but this is Damian Lillard's team right now. He's got to be great. He's got to take 25, 30. He's got to be doing what Jalen Brunson is doing on the Knicks. He's not efficient. He's not, he's not playing great, but, but he's controlling the offense. He's taking, because there's no such thing as a bad shot for Damian Lillard on this team in this series. So I don't care if he takes 35 shots, they're going to get a win with him doing that. I agree. Agreed. Concurred. Um, Shams Giannis, we know he's missed the two games so far. Any chance we see him for game three? The, the key for Giannis right now with this calf injury is starting to do some jumping on your shooting. And I'm told he has at least started to do some stationary jump shooting, and, and that was a big development for him, but still n not much cutting, n no scrimmaging, no all-out running yet, and those are all things, natural progression that he's gonna need to have, he's gonna come back from a calf injury. This is the same leg, we've talked about Achilles, hamstring, and now calf. They need to be cautious, they need to be careful. When they bring him back, he's gotta go through the natural progressions, um, and I think that's, that will start with the cutting and the scrimmaging and the running and the full throttle jumping on your jump shots. Game three is Friday. I, I think the fact that you haven't progressed to that, we'll see if he does over the next two days. Uh, you know, game three might be pushing it, game four on Sunday. But I think the Bucks have to be prepared to keep playing on without Giannis, making sure he's 100% when he does make it back. The, the two days off feels like a lot. Is that normal, Shams? Yeah. It is. You play, you play one, you play... Um, then you get a travel and day then you and get a travel, day yeah. in the game. Mm -hmm. That's good for them. I mean, but again, this isn't something I think is just going to magically heal. Like, it could, it's, uh, I think this is something that's going to linger, and if he can manage it, then fine, play. But this is a real injury that the playoffs, they... they they're pretty quick. Two days, it's, still, it's, it's not enough time. No, I wouldn't think it would be from everything Shams just said. It doesn't sound like it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back... Sham scoops and the most underrated player in the league. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Ooh, I love that sound because we got scoops. Shams, what's going on with JJ Reddick? He's got a new job every two days. Right. Yeah, JJ Reddick has interviewed for the Charlotte Hornets head coaching job, I'm told. <laughs> Um, he could have another interview soon as well. He's a serious candidate, as well as Charles Lee, the Celtics assistant coach. Uh, they've interviewed a bunch of assistants. They've, done, they've had a deep coaching search already, a bunch of assistants around the league. Lindsey Harding uh, as well, one of them, the G League head coach of the Stockton Kings. But J.J. Redick has a strong desire 
potentially to move into coaching. He's been public about that. Uh, privately, I'm hearing that as well. And uh, this could be, if it's not Charlotte, this could be more, uh, you know, more interviews for JJ Redick in his future in this potential cycle. But wow. uh, for now, we'll see where he progresses in Charlotte. Why? Okay, so mm. he wants to coach, I suppose. But it just seems like that's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough life. What are we thinking about this idea? Yeah, it's interesting because first he's of all, he's got a good life. He's, he's so good on TV yeah. too. But I mean, just the fact that he's getting these interviews. I think he got one last year, right, with Toronto or something. I think and so. He's a smart dude. He's savvy. He's obviously stayed in the know with doing media. So I think he would transition to a great coach. He's never coached before though, so it's interesting. Right. It's kind of like a Tony Romo getting a job interview for the NFL. It's like it's he's never he's never done it. He's played. He's played sure. at the highest level. So I think that can translate. But sometimes that doesn't. Um, it's not for me. I don't think I, I would never. No, no kidding. I would never want to coach. You know you have to be somewhere every uh, day. Yeah, correct. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, slide to my left here. <laughs> but yeah, I think he would be good. And I think he's a great dude. I think he's a brilliant basketball mind. So I think Man. it would transition well. Are there any other, like, when you think of players that would make good coaches? I mean, what am I looking for here? I feel like if you can't be born 100% talented like Michael Jordan, right? Because it came too easy, he wouldn't understand. Yeah, great players are terrible coaches yeah. because they always look for themselves in right. their teams. Like, they don't understand role players and, yeah. and things of that nature. I, you know, I would like Rajon Rondo to get a look okay. for, for coaching. Um, he's a basketball savant. Uh, even Jamal Crawford, very much like J.J. Redick. They're, they're both very brilliant basketball-minded people. They're playing in the, in the TV space, um, giving their perspectives. I think they both translate, as well as Rajon Rondo, I think they all would translate to be uh, pretty successful coaches. Like uh, Jared Dudley, <clears throat> I think. He's right. been an assistant now. That's a good think one. He, he, he's, like a, he's that guy, right? He's got and the he's person, in the mix. He's got he's, the personality. He's an assistant now in Dallas. He will be a head coach the next five years because he has that, that characteristic where he's, he's humble, but he can also relate. He's been there before. Hmm. Like you said, he's not Michael Jordan. He's not one of these elite players. So. Right. He can kind of get along, and he knows the game. Uh, so someone like that, that I think would also get a shot at That'd it. Be patient. How does one get an interview for a head coaching job just cold turkey out of the blue? Do the show a couple more years. And just I mean, does your agent, like obviously your agent knows that you are interested in yeah, it. Yeah, so they for start sure. putting you out there like, and obviously, hey. like JJ's done a really good job staying relevant and being 100%. on TV, and he's very good at it. So I think, yeah, with his agency, you take meetings and kind of go from there but it's got to be something he wants like 100 like percent. yeah they're not, not just calling what just, jobs available did i miss that hornets Ooh, the hornets job okay. just filled there. Charlotte, washington filled phoenix okay. is going to come available in like a week wow that's <laughs> too soon no it's not we're not gonna say that shams mean it when i say i love you oh you went that you was went back <laughs> to remix <laughs> halfway <laughs> through it my brain turned on uh we will see you bright and early tomorrow uh we're sticking around though because we have more survey says we we were just getting to the juicy parts yesterday um Paul Pierce and Magic have the same number of votes. Yeah, it's like that's a half great. a vote. But this that's, LeBron, that's... LeBron James, the younger the NBA, the new generation comes, LeBron's going to eventually pass him with Jordan, which is kind of crazy. And then you're slowly going to get like a, a new person that's going like to enter Steph Curry, game. and then you're going to see Wimby and Magic. People are going to be like, who's Magic Johnson? This old, oh, this old, as long as he's tweeting, we know Steph Curry, Magic Johnson, Paul Pierce, same impact on the game. Correct. I love it. Okay, hey, there you go. Fair enough. Uh, moving on, the NBA's best defender, Chandler. It's Rudy Gobert because he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year and he's well, the best was... defender on the best defensive team in the NBA. That's After what I'm seeing for Jay McDaniels, too, he's up there. Drew Holiday's up there. But Wimby's up there. But if I had mm -hmm. to pick one, I'm going Man, with Man, make your pick. You I he's running for office. Office. Like, If I had to pick one, I'm going Herb Jones. <laughs> 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 no, I'm going, Rudy Go I'm going Rudy Gobert. All right, Gobert it is. Lou? My pick is Drew Holiday. Okay. He, he, he was a big part of the Milwaukee Bucks championship run, yeah, and it looks it. like he's going to be a big part of the Boston Celtics championship run. He's given the Boston Celtics an identity that they hadn't had in the past, and if you've never been hounded by Drew Holiday full court and you wouldn't <laughs> understand what I'm saying, it's Drew Holiday. All right, so we got a Rudy and a Drew, and the survey says... I like these surveys. What? Lou, the... Dort, Lou Dort's a good one. Well, Victor Wembanyama is the top. Herb Jones is in there, though. These are all really good ones. Now they got this one right. Besides Rudy Gobert, that's just hate. Rudy should, yeah, they just that don't. Is kind of people funny. just don't like Rudy. That's they just, really that's don't just, like that's Rudy. That's just mean. That doesn't, that doesn't end. But Lou Dort's a good one. Lou Dort can 
Defend. I got. I need to know more about the personality of Rudy Gobert when he's amongst teammates. You know, honestly, I don't. Mo- I don't know much I, about him. Yeah. I know him really, really well, and he's a really, really good dude. Is this real that you're saying? I this? swear. Okay. I, how I, do you I know got, Rudy Gobert? How about this? Yeah, I got drafted. You know, 2011, I get drafted. There's a lockout. Okay. I go play in France. This team called Cholet in the oh, early. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like this 15-year-old kid that's like the next big thing. It's Rudy Gobert. Really? I've known him since he was a kid. And he's, he's a little different. He was a little immature back then, but like he's he's, <laughs> he's really, 15. Yeah, he's supposed he's to be okay, immature. but he's still the same guy that licked the microphone when the COVID the thing COVID started. The COVID thing didn't pan out. He might good. not be mature that still. Didn't pan out <laughs> so I mean, hot. and and the survey says <laughs> we determined that that probably didn't even matter. That was yeah. ground zero. What are you talking <laughs> that's about? That's where it all started. We still don't know what's going on. But that's another show. He's <laughs> not a bad guy at all. But it's it is fascinating that he's you know most overrated. He's low on this defensive player. Where clearly he's a great defensive player. Something going on here. Uh, in favor for the 65 game rule for season accolades. It's a simple yes or no, Lou. No. Okay, Chandler? No. All right, survey says. I'm thinking they're going to say against. Well, against. okay, but not that makes it no, right? It's closer than I thought it would be. How do you not know? I, I, I don't know. What is that? What, you have a, well, I need more info. I need another to season understand. of it. it well, there is some gray areas with these rules, right? Uh, Chandler alluded to it earlier in the year when we were talking about it. What if you're right there at that threshold, one or two games, does that, and that makes you ineligible, but you've played your ass off the... the well, so. Dante DiVincenzo was ineligible because he was like a minute that's, shy. That's why I'm there you go. Court. So there, there's the 5.2% of the gray area. Jokic plays 24. Well, that would be or, against them. Jokic plays 64 games, SGA plays 65, SGA gets MVP. Yes. Stupid. By the rule, yes. Uh, here we go. Least favorite arena to play in. Chandler. Chandler? I don't want to see him. You said it yesterday. Say it again. You have to. FedEx Forum, and it's not even close. (laughs) Okay, that would be Memphis for those of you not keeping track. Also, as a, but I'm going to switch to, also as a hometown Orlando kid. Their crowd is awful as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I expect it's not it good. to be you really, really this. good. You shouldn't do this. He's doing it. Let him do it. Let him cook. Right. I expect <laughs> it to be good this year because this team has, mm-hmm. you know, this team, the city is now excited. Yeah, They're playoffs. about to go to Orlando for game three and four. Mm-hmm. I expect that to be electric. electric. But FedEx, it's the cheapest season tickets. Okay. It's the least good packed. Thing. Yep. It's so like how, how could it not? It's the it's the it, there's it's never packed. It's, it's, it's just the. Uh, we, we always find a way to throw some shade at old. But Memphis. by the way, he could have just said it and moved on, but he had reasons for it, Lou. So now he just threw his hometown under the bus. Well, as well. because Orlando, I'd love to see this team ignite Orlando. I think they'll be seats. different for the playoffs. Yeah, I feel it's like, like it's got. But during the regular season, Orlando, there is you can't give away tickets. Um, I, I you know that's true. I have been there, Lou. What's your least favorite? And don't say you're not gonna say. No, I'm gonna say it's Boston Garden. Okay, there That's it the is. That's the best place to play. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, to me, I'm I'm, isn't I'm it? in the perks. I don't like the I don't like the locker room. I don't like the fact that oh. they put the fruit on the table on a towel. <laughs> this is good. You know this what is I'm talking. You know what I'm this, talking about. Usually, you come into the locker room. There's like a buffet of food. I thought you were gonna say like the <laughs> racism or the noise. <laughs> no, I, the I, was, I was getting there. Let me start. <laughs> I'm starting from the, I'm, the no, towel. Let me get there. I'm starting from the bottom. I'm starting from the, the pineapple the, socks. Look, can you imagine we come in here for breakfast in the morning and, and there's there a breakfast? towel right here and it's like a pear, a ba- a orange, <laughs> like three bananas. That sounds great. Your Gatorade is, uh, they got the canned Gatorade Ugh, still. The humanity. shower is only f- four shower heads. Disgusting. There's it's no two, wiener walls in the shower. There's <laughs> no walls. It's just a prison it's shower. Just, yeah, it's, it's like it's literally the <laughs> same shower from the Wilt Chamberlain days. It's the same I mean, there's a, there's a historic layout. And not to mention oh, that the fans don't know what to say out of their mouths to you have the you time go. when you're playing. That's One of my least favorite places. We <laughs> it was great. Oh. But I feel like that, that place is electric to play. I agree. I, 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 I mean, I the fans it. are. I, I, I was it. thinking more I like the boring, basketball empty, empty, like no home court well, advantage. It's your, it's your own opinions, and that's yeah. what's beautiful about hey, it. Hey, man, I, I, like, I like my fruit to come in the bowl. All <laughs> and right? not on a towel. Survey says, I don't know if they had these things in Okay, did you a little season's arena, but... This is this no is, Boston up there, buddy. But this is the Poor Detroit. Orlando. This is the Detroit of them not hometown. having any any wins. If they're a successful basketball team, Detroit is absolutely one of the best yeah. places to play. But this okay. year I get that they had eight wins. It smells Detroit. like a pepperoni pizza. Who can complain? <laughs> there's nobody there. Uh, that hey, makes no sense Boston. One. No Boston Garden. Not I'm even up one. there, buddy. It's cool. You, yeah, up. it's cool. Memphis is a third. I'll You're take it. Better. Yeah, you have to. But you're right, though. Washington, Charlotte, Detroit, they're, they're just empty. There's the, they're, but they haven't been good for a while, so that is why. So least favorite to play. Okay, here we go. Denver, <laughs> least favorite to play because of the altitude, I'm assuming. 
Right, and it's loud. It's very loud. OKC okay, is because you're. OKC okay, yeah. is loud as well. Um, favorite non NBA athlete? Lou, you're up. Coach Prime. Oh, okay. Coach Prime, he, he was the first athlete that I really, really looked up to. Did you he have had, posters? He had style, he had substance. Um, what did you say? Did you have like a poster or a t shirt with him on it? I, I did have a, a Deion Sanders poster. Thank I couldn't you. afford his shoes. Um, growing up, I always wanted Deion Sanders shoes, but it, he's always been someone I've admired. So for him yeah. to be uh, relevant to this day is it's, it, it, it's a testament to who he was. Is. Chandler? I I went with Caitlin Clark. I think what she's done. <laughs> I did not have that on my bingo card. Really? He's drinking too much. You did? I did. I said I, I went with Caitlin Clark. Neanderthal oh, Chandler God. Parsons. And Patrick Mahomes. Let, hey, let me ask you a question on, on live television. Oh, how, how many WNBA games have you ever been to? Been to? Zero. What, what did you think the question was? I rest my case, Your Honor. No, he, but no, he will ask me go how now. How many Kaylin Clark games I've watched this year, and how many I will watch next year? I'm saying she. How many Kaylin Clark games will you go to? I guess I'm not gonna fly to. Well, when they games. come here. But this is your I love, favorite. I love. I love Tom Brady. I didn't fly to New England. I was oh, that's right. But I'm sure you've played. I'm sure you've seen Tom Brady play. I'm sure you made it a point nope. to at least see Tom Brady play nope. one. I have not. Yeah, right. I, I know, know what better. you're doing here. I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. Kaylin Clark is my answer. She's Caitlin changed the game. She's exciting. We get fun. Uh, survey says. She's my answer. Oh my she, gosh. You're allowed to have your answer. Oh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson. Clark. All right. Hey, that's interesting. Uh, you, joke this is a funny lit. Holy cow, it, this, it runs this, the this gamut. Crazy. No Deion Why is there so many on, there? on this? Line? There's so many. Well, because everybody, everybody had to just write one in. CJ Stroud, Angel Reese, Jalen Hurts, John Tank Davis, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, this is all the young guys. These are all rookies did this list. But Usain Bolt being up there is interesting because that's, he, you know, that's once every four years. Maybe. Mahomes. Mahomes was my second one. No, that, was, that one's good, right? Yeah, Wait. that's a good one. I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked. Play. I've seen him play, Lou. You're full of shit with the <laughs> Kayla Clark ass. I was going for connection. You cheated. You <laughs> cheated, and we all know it. Um, you didn't even come up with that on your own. Did you look at this yes, list? I, no, okay, I didn't look bye. at the list. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, come back, wrap Jeez, things up here. Tough crowd. Uh, run it back. We just want to keep you accountable. Run it back, yeah. Run it oh, up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up. We have, we have three minutes left, and Lou wants to talk stagecoach, but we're not gonna. Bill Blaine. Um, I, I posted it. Heat will win game two over the Celtics if what, Chandler? What? The Heat will win game two over the Celtics. They missed the bus to the arena, and the They're, Celtics don't show Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Uh, no, they have to score more points. I think they scored like 94 points last game. They got to score. They got to have one of these explosive games where Tyler Hero goes off, Bam goes off. If they score Everyone. 124 points, Damn. they'll win the game tonight. 124 is the call. Mm. That seems. But it's slim pickings. Um, okay. What about the? We have another game. We got two tonight. Uh, Pelicans will win game two over the Thunder if Lou. You got to get big nights from your stars. You got to have a big night from C.J. McCollum. Um, and I think he has to anchor them. We, we talked about Herb Jones. He has to have a defensive standard. They just got to come out and be motivated. It's going to be tough. I don't think they're going to win, but <laughs> <laughs> for, in order for them to win the game, they got to get big nights from Herb Jones, um, C.J. McCollum, mm. and Co. Will either one of these series be split after tonight? No. This one. Really? Pelicans. Pelicans. You like Pelicans right now? I think they should have won game one. I think that I think both teams are going to be better. I think it's going to be a competitive game. I think all these games are going to be close. I don't think either. You just like going against the grain. He does. No, I truly think so. I truly yeah, think so. They, should, they were one. Put your money where your mouth is. They were one. No problem. They were one <laughs> step through three. If CJ McCollum's three goes in there, if they get a, they, yeah. they were right there. So I think they bounce back. I think they're a more mature team. I think they even it up. Oklahoma City sure. Thunder has the future MVP on that basketball team. Big shot to lead them. <clears throat> I think he's going to do it early. I mean, they could have won that game, though. The Heat Celtics everybody is not everybody be has tied up. Right. It's got, if there's one, it's this one. It's, I, I agree. Like, if we're picking yeah. one of these to be I had split, to pick one, it's this one. It ain't going to be the Heat. Unless the Celtics just drop the ball. I mean, it I ain't going to be the Pelicans. All right. So. That's just depressing. We Why are you see? watching? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> see you guys tomorrow. Depressing <laughs> game. We're still going to watch. It's our jobs. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back, wrap things up for real this time. We'll run it back. They're running back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Just enough time to make some money for everybody. Uh, Chandler, you're up first. Little prop party. 
Yep, I went with. You don't know. My, <laughs> Trey Murphy over three and a half threes. I love this Whoa. show. That's good. I thought I did two and a half three. I think Lisa threw an extra one on there. No, for... she doesn't throw it on there. The books change. Understood. <laughs> I did that, and then Valanciunas <laughs> over rebounds. Big dominate, Lou, Chet. Go. I like um, Oklahoma City money line. I like this. SGA, big, big time night. 29 okay. and a half. He's going to have 34 points. Mine's Thunder money line, money line and Jalen Williams, and easy for us to say. See you tomorrow. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up.